It's easy to hear your favorite artist on WFPK from wherever you are. Listen on your smart speaker, live stream from our website at WFPK.org, from Louisville Public Media. Consequence Podcast Network. Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with... It's the interview series presented by WFPK Independent Louisville at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks to all the subscribers for checking us out every single episode. It's a lot to keep up with, uh, with new ones every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Maybe that's not a lot at all. Maybe that's just exactly what you're looking for. Uh, you know, we give you all your favorite artists and what they're up to, and I appreciate you checking out all the episodes. Uh, if you haven't given the series a rating, uh, left a review, hopefully you get inspired to do that as well. And if you're not a subscriber, uh, take the moment to hit that subscribe button right now uh, to keep up with us. Because, again, uh, there's no better way to figure out what your favorite artists are doing than, uh, than checking this out. And a million other things, too. But at least checking this out is one of those million other things I appreciate it. I'm Kyle Meredith, and today my guest, Evanescence. I'm going to be talking with Amy Lee. Evanescence are currently in the studio working on a brand new record. Now, while they did have the Synthesis record come out in 2017 that sort of reimagined a lot of their catalog, uh, this is essentially their first album of all new material since 2011. It's almost been a decade, so we're going to hear about those sessions. But also we're going to hear about uh, a little teaser they've given us, a cover of Fleetwood Mac's The Chain. It's tied to the video game Gears of War, Gears 5, and its soundtrack. So Amy's going to tell us about the process of how she got involved with that and how it became a full band thing, as well as what she actually gets out of that song. You know, this is a song that a lot of artists cover from time to time, and there's probably a good reason for that, and we'll get into that as well. Of course, when you're talking about Fleetwood Mac, you get to talk about uh, Stevie Nicks, and and with Stevie, there's there's a likeness between... uh, you know, Stevie Nicks as the mystic and, and Amy Lee as we know her in Evanescence and you know, their stage presence. So there's some fun comparisons in the interview with that as well. And just the idea of, uh, of what it's like to soundtrack a video game, I mean, what it's like to soundtrack a movie and how those differ from, you know, just regular album writing. And as far as the regular album, again, the new one's in the work, and I'm going to try to get as much out of her as possible. Uh, what's it sound like? What can we expect? You know, a few of the adjectives she's used so far, dark, heavy, weird. I especially want to know what that weird part is. And coming off of the uh, symphonic record, the uh, synthesis, you know, is, is that something, is that a sound that uh, we're going to hear again in this new album? And in the meantime, there's also a tour coming up. Evanescence are going to be touring with the band Within Temptation. Amy has said it's uh, the biggest production they've done in a long time, so I want to know what that's about. So let's jump into this. It's Kyle Meredith with Evanescence. Hello. You know, Evanescence just released a new music video. It's the cover of Fleetwood Mac's The Chain, which is a part of the uh, Gears of War, Gears 5 uh, video game soundtrack. What is it about this song that attracts artists to cover it? I mean, there's something about it, right? There is something amazing about it. I don't know. What is it about music that makes us love it? A lot of things. I think the lyrics are really, really beautiful. For me personally, that spoke to me in a way that I could apply to my own life. Like, I feel that it's real and about a real story, but at the same time, it's open enough that I can apply it to real situations in myself. Musically, it's awesome and versatile. And this wasn't, you know, originally our idea to just pick this song. It was what Gears of War was doing. So I heard this really amazing intro like music bed um idea for it and they wanted me to just sing it just for like a 30 second to a one minute clip and i loved it and was in but i was like geez we can't just stop like that we have to can i please get my whole band to do the whole song like we we have to do this for real if we're gonna do this and they were stoked on that and i was so happy because it gave us this excellent opportunity to get in the studio in a rock like original way kind of way um which we haven't done in a while. I mean, we were in there doing synthesis, working with the orchestra, working outside of our comfort zones, which has been really cool. But, you know, it's we're gearing up for writing our new record. We've been, we've been writing this last year, and we're getting ready to go in the studio now and actually start recording some of it. And this was just that perfect thing to get us in there, working in that way, bouncing ideas off each other, throwing them down, seeing what we kind of sound like, <laughs> you know, today. We can kind of feel that out on stage, but it's a different thing getting in the studio and um, really getting that vibe off each other. And we just had such a good time doing it, and it felt so good. I think it gave us a real boost 
of energy and inspiration for the new stuff. I hear a lot of bands that'll do that, like especially when they get into a studio, if it's a studio that they're not used to recording in, like they'll pick cover songs to just get the room sound or something like that. But usually we don't get to hear those songs, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually hadn't even heard of that, but that's a great idea. You were talking about relating to the lyrics. I think I read in one of your other recent interviews that there was something about this that almost speaks to the divisiveness that that's you know talking in the song. And I, I, you know, it's easy with that word. I wondered if you were talking about big picture stuff, like national story type of stuff, with that. Honestly, for me, I feel like I have been through a lot with this band. Like from the early days, you know, it's funny. People always gravitate towards the drama, right? <laughs> um, and in very early in our career, like it was, it was very tumultuous. Um, it's not an easy thing keeping a band together. It's a really rare and special thing when you have a band of people together that all are focused together and respect each other and work well together and work like a functional, semi-functional family. <laughs> and it's been a long road getting to where we're at now. And I absolutely do feel that love for my band and that respect that not only that I have for them, but that they have for me, which means everything to me. I don't, at this day, I'm 38. I don't think I could work (laughs) in a world where it wasn't that way anymore. Life's too short. So, I mean, just, just for that, like for the strength of it and, and, and to, to say it in terms too, that it's not like, okay, all the problems are solved. Everything's perfect. It means that it takes work to keep a relationship together. And I think that that, That knowledge and that understanding and that mutual respect is just something that we all appreciate very much and we all work for. And it just felt really good to to come together this way for the song. Yeah, well, I I do love the way you've done it. You you serve... You serve the original. I mean, because I mean, Stevie Nicks has got that air of mysticism about her, and I, I think I can apply the same sort of mm-hmm. thing to you. You know, whether that comes natural or whether that's something you've worked on, but that's still something very rare in music to pull off, uh, regardless of how it's presented. And mm-hmm. and I, I find that there is a likeness right. between you and and that band, like that. And is that is well, that that's an incredible that... <laughs> compliment. Thank you so much. Yeah, is that thing sort of um, important to you? I mean, do, do you strive for the because mystery is important to me in music, you know? I don't know if it's so much like something I strive for or something that I'm always kind of fighting myself against. I'm I'm definitely on the edge. I'm a little bit old school. I'm not a complete, you know, millennial. I definitely started out without social media in my life or cell phones even. So, for me like I always loved like wondering what was going on with a band. I was such a huge fan of like Nine Inch Nails and Portishead. Those are two great examples. Mm-hmm. So like I loved Beth Gibbons. Like her voice was incredible. Um, the music was so creepy and it just drew you in in a way that was like, what is going on in that person's life? Like what do they look like? And the album artwork was super vague and mysterious too. Like, you'd kind of see her face like in one half shot, but I didn't even really know what she looked like. And it, just made me like imagine in a way that was so cool. And it's cool to feel like, you know, celebrities aren't some, you know, gods and goddesses up there that we can't understand or relate to. I think it's cool to see that people are are real people, but there's just something really alluring in, uh, especially in like the art world about not knowing everything about what you're listening to, because it can become kind of whatever you want it to be. It's interesting. Uh, you and I are the same age, and I, I think we have the same touch points as far as you know what we got into growing up. I, I don't think I ever realized that, but I completely agree with that. And and then when you apply it, you know, something like this to, like, like so again, it, it's part of a, a game soundtrack with Gears Five and the Gears of War series. And I know it's not your first time in the game arena, yeah. as I read. You know, you all had done something even with as far back as 2003 with Nintendo. Does soundtracking a game differ oh, yeah. from soundtracking a movie or or even just a regular album writing? Like, it, does it? Is it something different in that in that um, venue? Well, yeah. Making anything, creating something audio that goes to a visual that already exists is different because then you have a map. You have sort of a guideline of what it needs to feel like. You want to do your best to like put the internal feelings of the character that you're looking at or whatever in, into the either the, the the words or the production or both or whatever it is. So when we're just writing music for ourselves, it can be anything. And then we can create, you know, visuals to go along with that, that that sort of just like push that further. But no, I think it's a really, really good, fun, useful 
I don't know, positive thing. It's it's good for me. I love writing to visual because then you feel like, I don't know, it's almost like there's a cheat. It's like, I know what this is supposed to mean. I know where this is supposed to go. I don't just have to follow blindly into the darkness and, you know, discover something about myself that I maybe didn't want to know. Um, <laughs> you can sort of work um, from a different angle. Um, and that creates for some, I think, um, artistic self-discovery as well, because you find yourself doing things, thinking, putting your place, putting yourself in the place of someone else. Um, and then you discover that you like doing things that you wouldn't have naturally done, if that makes sense. Whereas what, the, what I would think with a movie, though, you know, you're, you, you get to sort of kind of set it to a set scene, whereas a video game, there, there's a bit right. of a, a bit of chance because, you know, it's what the player provides sure. that your music might be set to or something. Well, that's true, but we were definitely, at least, you know, in the beginning, it was all about, like, there's a video game there, right? Mm. So, like, I mean, there's a trailer there, so that was the focus. But then when it got to be our own thing, we sort of got to do the other side of that and go, okay, let's blow this world open and, and do the whole thing with, like, a, you're right, like a basic visual in mind, like an idea and an image and a feeling, but not, like, line by line. Yeah, when you're writing for, like, a score, that's different. You really have to <laughs> make it work or just edit it really well. That's really the best thing to do. <laughs> all about the forward. editing. All about the editing. Yeah. You you did apply that to the music video, though, right? So, I mean, it, it sort of calls into that video game world in a way. We were hoping to do that, yeah. Um, we want to kind of put ourselves in that place, but not exactly. Right. Um, it's got to be a combination between um, the Gears world and us. So, like, the whole thing that, that, that the cover really became. That's cool. Uh, it's it's really pretty, and, and I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, visually Thanks. stunning is what I'm trying to say, you know, how it's all put together. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah, it's really Thank interesting. Thank you. We had fun with it, for sure. We were having fun trying to, um, I don't know, we had fun with the wardrobe this time. <laughs> I sort of had an actual idea. Sometimes I get those, and I was like, I have a vision. Like, let's match. Like, let's do a theme. And I used to kind of do that more, and I've gotten a little more like, oh, everybody's cool. Just dress cool. And this time I was like, no, we got to, like, Pick a color scheme. I'm going to smear this lipstick on your face. Like, it's going to be great. Just trust me. Yeah, it's not exactly Mad Maxium what you're wearing, but it's, you know, with the feathers and everything, it almost makes me kind of think sort of in that dystopian sort of world in that way. Totally. Yeah, that definitely was the goal. Yeah. Do you get to keep that? Can you wear that out anywhere else other than the music video and the I stage? I did get to keep that. Well, luckily, I, yeah, I was going to say, luckily, I get to get up on stage. So I got to keep that badass leather jacket dress thing, which I was super excited about. So I definitely scored a couple of stage pieces from this project. But this isn't like I'm, I need to, you know, run out to Walgreens or CVS. And I'm, I mean, you could, <laughs> you know, but. I could, as long as they have gauze. I could just wrap myself. <laughs> gauze and then pretty much make an evanescent stage outfit out of that <laughs> it's been done it's been done well I, I would like to hear a little bit about what you guys are up to in, in the studio because there is a new album you've talked a little bit about you know dark and heavy and i love that you said weird because i feel like that's something that you've always sort of strived <laughs> for is to inject a little bit of weird into oh, what you're doing you. and what does that mean Good. for this time around it's it's always hard defining what something's turning out like, what something sounds like when you're still in progress, okay? Because whatever I say, then my little rebellious heart is going to run the other direction and do something else because I said it out loud. It's kind of stupid the way that it works, but that's just how it goes. What this is kind of becoming for us is it's been a really long time since we've released a full original album. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that this isn't so much like a, hey, let's take a step in this other direction totally for the whole thing thing. It's got to sort of sum us up, you know? It's got to be like the whole picture of what we are now when it becomes complete. So in this moment, especially in the first moment, writing together, coming off of synthesis and that whole tour, we badly were just like, we need to be raw. Like, let's just completely strip everything away but our instruments and stand here and just rock. Like, go heavy. Let's go. So we got some really great stuff out of that feeling. Um, and then it started just taking a trip down some other roads and i just i think that we're an album band we're always going to release an album like a full album at the end of things but i think it's going to be really fun not to wait and do it all at once this time we're actually going to the studio on monday um to record just three songs with uh nick raskulinix who did our um self-titled album with us which it's our favorite um it's, our, it's the band's favorite album <laughs> that's why when you go to our show there's so much new material we try not to play the whole thing but it's hard to help it so we're going in with him for just a few. We're still actually going to, we haven't quite decided which, which songs they're going to be. We have a good handful that we're all excited about. And we're just going to get in there and kind of 
pre-pro it out. Like Nick is the king of like, we get in a room just with nothing, no production, just with our instruments and jam. Um, and he sort of directs the jam <laughs> and um, we go through it and, and find all the parts, you know, that could be better and try out all the ideas, switch things around, whatever, really firm them up. Like, okay, this is the structure of the song that we're going to do. And when we go through that process and really refine the songs, I think it'll just become clear which three are um, the ones that we want to do the strongest and the ones that feel um, right with Nick. Um, and then we're just going to go and do that and spend the next couple of weeks finishing those. And I don't know when exactly we're going to release the first one, but the plan is to then go you know, in with another producer and sort of focus on a different side. There's some songs that are very, I don't know how to describe it, um, a little bit more in the electronic world, a little bit more in the open door, weird kind of mid-tempo world. And there are some that are other so I don't know. Mm-hmm. I want to kind of separate all the elements that make up who we are and push them to their extremes. So when you get the whole picture of the whole album at the end of it, um, which I, I want to just kind of release songs all, over the course of the year one by one. And then at the end, it would be like, okay, here's the rest of the album. Now you have the whole thing. But I want to kind of create that feeling. I miss that feeling that true singles used to create when everybody didn't just listen to music at their own pace. Mm-hmm. Like we were all together listening to one song at a time. And I also don't want to make people wait anymore. Um, and I don't really want to wait anymore to play new music. So <laughs> if we release one here and there as we go, you know, a couple months apart over the course of the year, then it kind of gives us both, you know, right. We get to keep it fresh, do touring in between. We're going on a big tour in April with, with In Temptation in Europe. And we're really looking forward to that. And then we can come back again and work on more songs and get the next batch going. And it can all just sort of flow together. I want to scratch every itch. <laughs> and I also want to like, and I don't mean that in terms of like what people already know and want. I want to scratch my own itches. Like I really want to do all the things that feel awesome and <laughs> just put that all out there. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's fun. We're having a lot of fun so far. And I, I'm, I'm at that point where we just have like two days and then we're going to be in there. So like cramming to finish lyrics like no this isn't enough it has to be like my whole soul and every bit so um this is the part where i'm frustrated and then it all comes together and i'm like oh, yes it was just part of my process well it, it's 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 you know always been fun when you do do go down those avenues of, of as you say scratching your own itches too because even coming off the last record with uh, synthesis i mean that seemed like that was really one of those moments and mm-hmm. and, and i had wondered as like oh does that yeah does that I, this sort of idea carry over too? I mean, that synth sound that you explored there, is that something that was just for that moment or that you for needed sure. to scratch or does that come it along? Was, it, I think it comes along, but it, not sort of like what I said, like in its own place. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't want to do an album that's like that. Synthesis was such a beautiful direction for the whole concept, for the whole thing. It was really unique for us. And that is a part of us, but it's just a piece. So that piece will still fit into this puzzle, I believe. But it just won't be the um, the theme. Right. You know, you mentioned the tour too with uh, with In Temptation come along. You said this is a, a bigger production to this tour than you've done in a while. Uh, can can yeah. you give anything away yeah. about that? What can we can expect? I can't. I can't because <laughs> we're actually still we're we're fully in the creative right now. We have an amazing um, production designer that we just started working with named Sooner. She's incredible. So she's actually we've had the preliminary discussions about all the creative ideas and now she's off actually trying to put that together so i have nothing to say that's... other than it's going to be awesome <laughs> i'll take that that's something that's something i believe you i look okay. forward to seeing the show too uh w- w- with this tour and everything and amy i really really appreciate you, you taking the time to talk and uh and looking forward to the next record and in the meantime the chain sounds fantastic thank you for that as well thanks a lot i appreciate it thanks for taking the time no problem it was a pleasure to talk to you all right take care you too all right bye bye. and my thanks to amy lee evanescence the uh cover of fleetwood max the chain has its own video that you can find out there and of course the single is available on all the places that music is available looking forward to the new album too and check out the tour dates again the tour dates are on tour with uh within temptation coming up so Definitely see if that's stopping in your area. And a big thanks to you as well for checking out the episode. Uh, Again, hopefully you got inspired uh, while you're sitting wherever you're listening to this, uh, a place where you can leave uh, a review or give the series a rating. Those are always huge helps right there. Uh, Or leave a comment in the comment box. And whether it's about the interview, uh, whether it's just about the series, or you want to say hi and where you're listening from, always love hearing from you all. Thank you for that. If you're not a subscriber, you can do it anywhere you get your podcast from. That includes iTunes and Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, 
YouTube, Acast, Stitcher, Podchaser, any of those places. Just type in Kyle Meredith with and subscribe. And we'll send three episodes a week straight to your eardrums. After that, head to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, and bonus interviews. Again, that's WFPK.org. Consequenceofsound.net has your music and film news. You can also find me on social media, all the platforms, at Kyle Meredith. And that does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time. Consequence Podcast Network. Make sure to not breathe too head- heavily into the phone. <laughs> I mean, if that's the persona that you want to give, you know, that's that's fine. <laughs> Dude, I worked a long time to not make it like that. <laughs> I'm Lior Phillips, host of This Must Be The Gig. We're a weekly podcast that documents everything about the world of live music. Speaking with choreographers, costume and set designers, the people who run beloved venues and festivals, and, of course, speaking with musicians about that one gig that changed their lives. Get your peek behind the curtain at consequenceofsound.net, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.